Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a review of three applications that I use to keep myself productive and make sure that I know what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis at work and in my personal life. Um, this is going to include a review of Todoist, Microsoft Outlook, and Evernote. So I'm going to start off by going into my to-do list application and walking you through how I use this exactly, um, what the cost is, and uh, how I integrate it with the other applications. So on the screen, you can see that I've downloaded the Todoist Microsoft application. Um, they do have apps for Mac, iOS, Android, as well as um, pretty much any device you can think of. They all pretty much look the same. Um, so it just depends on which device you're using, but I prefer to use the app on Microsoft. Um, on this screen, you can see my uh, overdue list for today, which is quite extensive. Um, I took the day off on Friday, so now I've got things kind of piling up. Um, as well as you know, a couple of house chores. Right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at my today view which includes anything from any to-do list project. On the left side you can see my project categories. Um, so personal to-do list, it looks extensive with 47 items. The reason for this is I have a lot of repeating items. So when I have things that I, I know that I need to do on a regular basis like weekly, uh, monthly, bi-weekly, uh, annually, things like that, you can set things up to repeat over and over. So if I click at the overall list, um, you can see things like take paper to the recycling, and this is going to be every first Sunday. Um, clean out the gutters, this happens you know, once a year maybe. Um, grocery shopping is every Saturday, and then meal prep follows grocery prep, um, shopping on Sundays. The way that you can do these um, repeating patterns is by going into your dates and just typing in pretty common sense language like every first Sunday or every Friday or every first of the month or last of the month. It's pretty intelligent in how it does its date patterns. Um, so you can pretty much experiment with, with how you want to do your, your um, repeating tasks if you've got any. And you can even put times, but I don't usually bother with this because I don't know what time I'm going to take the trash out on Thursdays. Uh, I just know that I have to do it at some point. Sometimes I will have specific times, and those are nice when you put in something like every first Sunday, um, we'll say at 8 p.m. What's going to happen is this little alarm bell will show up, and it will notify you at that time um, about 30 minutes ahead of time. And I think you can change that too, but 30 minutes is the default. So if you have the app downloaded on your phone, it'll pop up an application reminder and just tell you, you know, take paper to the recycling at 7.30 p.m. because it's due by 8. So there are a lot of things you can do with this um, with this application in terms of reminders. Uh, aside from just the timed reminders on specific dates, you can also do geolocation reminders. Um, so if I change this to location, I can type in the actual uh, address of where I want to be reminded of things. The only thing I actually use this for is when I'm going to the grocery store. Um, I have also integrated this app with, with Alexa, and when I tell Alexa, you know, add coffee to my my shopping list, I can come back in here later and add a geotag to it to remind me um, everything uh, on my list once I get to Kroger, uh, which is the closest grocery store to my house. So some some differences, some people don't really like the reminder uh, feature. I experimented with both and I don't really find the geotagging that useful. Um, but for things like grocery shopping or, or buying things when you are near a store or reminding yourself to try a specific restaurant if you happen to be driving by or walking by, they can be pretty useful and just kind of novel um, because I've never seen another to-do list that does something like that. Um, so really, um, I do place these at the top tier, but I also have more specific to-do lists below that. So sometimes when something's annoying me around the house and I'm just, you know, don't have time to take care of it. I'll just add it to, to my to-do list and I'll, I'll take care of it later so I don't forget. Um, my shopping list is, is integrated with, um, <laughs> with uh, Alexa so I can just speak to her um, and I do have five of them around my house so pretty much from anywhere in the house I'll just say, you know, Alexa, add this to my shopping list. Um, oh, she actually just woke up and heard that so I'm going to have something on my shopping list. Um, that might actually show up here in a second. And then self-care, these are just things that I should do, like scheduling appointments, changing things like my razors or contact lenses. Um, and then side projects are just things that I want to set up. So uh, there's all kinds of things um, you can do with these. I create a lot of sub-projects under project categories. Um, but the most useful thing that I found with Todoist isn't for personal life, but for work. Um, so for work, I have a lot of projects where I have to keep track of a lot of tasks like um, issue logs or 
uh, things that are due in the next week or so. And sometimes when my, my customers are testing things, I don't have time to really get to things right away. So I'll place them in the to-do list and I'll forget about it for now and, and continue focusing on what I need to do. Um, now, this seems like a lot of work to some people to come back and forth to another application to take care of their, of their um, to-do list items. So what I found was you can actually integrate this with Outlook, which is what most people will use in business. Um, so I've found that if I go into Outlook um, and I, I download the Todoist um, add-on for Outlook, you can actually replace the native task list with Todoist and it looks exactly the same just in a cut down panel view. Um, so down here under work to do, now let's just, let's find one with actual items, UTSW. Um, so I've got an item here. How do you add items to these lists? Um, there's two ways really. There's a button up here that that shows up once you've integrated and you can find something here and click the button once the email is selected and it will pull the email right into your Todoist app. Um, now Todoist doesn't naturally know which project this is going to go to so you want to type in um, a pound symbol and then you can either choose from the drop down or just start typing uh, UTSW or whatever the project is. Um, it'll, it'll pick it up and you can just hit enter once you've got enough um, you've got one project narrowed down or it's the first one selected and then if you want to you can add tags with the at symbol and my tags are typically how long do I think this will take me so in a lot of cases I would have little slots of time throughout my day between meetings or between um, sessions of work and if I find myself with half an hour of time what I might do is I might search for all of my five or ten minute tasks and just knock something out when, when I have time so if I if I'm you know find myself with some downtime I'll just type in five, hit five minutes, and it'll instantly pull up all the different five minute tasks regardless of the project. So this is really useful for people who take a lot of time to ramp up when they're getting things done at work um, because this takes out the, the first step of having to actually figure out what do I need to do right now and then also deciding how long is that thing gonna take me? Do I have time to figure that out? Um, this cuts out all the all that stuff and leaves you with you know just just think about how are you going to get that done and don't think about the details like how long will this take or uh, you know what what items do I actually have to get done this will take all that out for you so you don't have to go back and forth to the Todoist app you can just do this from your work email um, now if you have an email selected like I just did you can click on that and it actually links you to the email itself so this is really useful instead of having to go back after finding your to-do item and then digging up in the search area you know where's that email it's already linked so you don't have to go and do that either now if you don't finish that to-do item while you're working on it you can add notes to say this is where I left off so I don't really use the voice notes that much but I do like to type down um, just notes to self basically like this is what happened you know here's what I was working on here's where I left off and I'll pick it up later and reread my notes um, some people think they'll remember what they were doing but that typically isn't the case so it's good to leave yourself a note um, there's a lot of other features here like activity logs um, for checking on uh, when tasks were completed or who added notes. These are really for, for teams that use Todoist together. I use it by myself. Nobody else in my company really uses this um, in, in conjunction with each other. It's not something that our company pays for. So I don't have a team on Todoist. I'm just using this by myself. Um, but once you've completed it, it disappears from here. You can always go back and find it later. Um, but it, it kind of drops off your, your radar because you're done. So this is really useful if you were not trying to go back and forth and type in new notes here and come back into Todoist um, or into your, your email app. Now, I did mention that I have also integrated this with Evernote, and there is, there is a natural Evernote um, integration with, with Outlook, but it has nothing to do with the Todoist integration. They aren't talking to each other. So how do I how do I use it in conjunction? Um, well, I've got my Evernote notebook here or set of notebooks, and what I do let me reduce the noise is I set up a work reference area and also a customer area for any any project that I'm currently working on. Now, inside of each of these customer areas, um, let's find one like this one here. I've got a note called completed tasks um, by whichever project it is and what happens is every time I click that that radio button in my uh, Todoist it automatically sends those items here with the um, with the uh, 
title of the to-do item, then um, you know any labels that I would have had would show up here, which would be like those five minutes or 10 minutes or something like that. And then the date and time that I finished. This, this link here is automatically generated and it will take me to that to-do list item um, so that I can read the notes on it if there were any. So that's really useful to just kind of keep track here. And the reason that I do this is because it's kind of hard to find those those completed to-do list items. Um, so this is just a much easier way of keeping track of things at a glance. Um, I can just type it in my notes area if I don't feel like actually digging through that stack. You know, um, completed city of Bloomington. And it'll narrow it down to that, that list eventually once I've typed in enough. Um, so how do I get it to, to auto-populate this note every time I click that button? Well, I guess this is something I didn't really discuss earlier, but I use another application called IFTTT, or if this, then that. Um, so I have a ton of things going on in this application right now, so you're probably going to see a lot of little applets. But I'll just dive right into the uh, integration between Microsoft and or Outlook and uh, Evernote. Um, so my applets. So the ones we're looking at are here. This is a whole set of apps that look for completed tasks and Todoist, and then automatically append them to a note in a specific notebook. So if we look at the one that I was just uh, showing, which was City of Bloomington PD, the way that this works is whenever I complete a task in a specific project, which is the City of Bloomington PD, and this is that drop down area um, here, so City of Bloomington PD, this has to be word for word the same, but they give you a drop down to choose from, so you can't really get that wrong. It then takes anything completed there and it appends it to a note called Completed City of Bloomington PD Tasks. This has to be exactly spelled the right way um, or else it will create a new uh, note to append these to. So the way that I set this up is I don't even create a note in that, that notebook. I just let the task create the first note and then it continues to add to it so there's no possibility of a mistake. Now it fills out the note with a couple of things and I formatted this um, a little bit myself just to make it look better but the BR stands for line break, the B is just a bolding so I, that's how I got the bolded task content and completed and just to show you again what that looks like you can see at the top there is a line break so there's an extra space here, bolding for the, for the title, um, and then there's a link here. Now, the way that it takes this title is, is um, from some automatic uh, content. So it says task content. This is an ingredient for IFTTT where you can choose, you know, if, if I want a dynamic value, not a static word or phrase, I can choose from this dropdown to say, just give me the task content, which is um, where we got the bolding or the bolded text. Um, and then after that, it can be viewed at, and this is the link that takes me to the task where I can see any notes that I've left, um, another line break, and then any labels that I've placed on the task, another line break, and then when the task was completed. Um, so an auto-generated date and time. And this comes from Todoist. So if your time zone is incorrect, you'll get an incorrect date and time stamp. I did that the first time because I travel back and forth between um, Pacific Standard and Eastern a lot for work. So. Um, once I had that righted, I got the right dates and times of when I completed things, and it looks really good. I can easily tell what I've done in each area, and if I can't tell, then I'll just go into that to-do list link and look for more, some more information. Um, now, one big reason that I did this was not just for my own benefit, but for project manager benefit. A lot of times when I'm working on, on troubleshooting things for tasks, um, the project manager will ask me, you know, how are things going, um, what have you gotten done so far? And instead of having to remember what did I just do over the last couple of days, I can just come here, copy and paste it, and send it off in an email. Or I can just choose to email it straight from this note by typing in the person's email. Um, that would be the lazy way to do it, um, which I'm all for if it saves you some time. But it would be a little bit better if you can just copy and paste the relevant to-do list items. So that's usually the way I go. Um, but that's how I combine all three of those applications where I take Todoist um, and segment it into projects. Um, and let's go back and take a look at that again. So here in the work Todoist area, I, I create a new project for each active customer that I've got and then I start adding items as they come up. Um, usually I will add to-do like dates, so when do I need to have this done by? If I don't have those added, they're just due uh, whenever you've got some downtime or 
that's something you know you've got an open space where you can work on things um, this is not a great idea to leave items with no due date because they will never show up in your today area or next seven days area you'd have to specifically go look for them so I don't recommend doing this it's just that I was in a rush and I added them all one at a time and, and kind of forgot about them so I'll fix that later um, but once you've got all that set um, you'd then want to integrate into your Outlook area so you want to download the um, Todoist uh, integration and I can go through that if um, if anyone's curious of how you do that and you can't figure it out yourself just leave comments in the in the area below and I'll make another video describing in more detail how I did these things um, finally once you've got that integrated you'd want to set up a, um, a Evernote notebook for each customer and then you'd you'd want to um, either create a note beforehand or just let IFTTT create those notes for you um, so again just kind of looking at that uh, here's IFTTT now you you have to do the if this part for the Todoist if if an, a note is or a, a to do list item is completed and then then that which is create a note or append to note if, if it already exists um, in Evernote so in if IFTTT, if, if you don't already have this, what you have to do is you have to go in and select your services, in my case, Todoist and Evernote, and you have to log in to your account so that IFTTT can, can read um, notes or um, actions and then create an action in the other um, receiving end. So there's a couple of things that you'd have to set up beforehand if you don't already have these services, but they are very easy to set up um, once you kind of poke around and figure out what you're doing with these apps. Um, so that's just what I wanted to share how I how I keep myself um, going with with these three applications how I how I can keep all my projects straight and it, it, there are quite a few of them to keep straight so I just wanted to share that with everyone and um, if you've got any questions I can clarify in the comments or I can release uh, another video that kind of describes in more detail the technical side of, of setting up all of these like I can I can go through and, and configure one of these uh, notebooks from scratch for a um, just a, a make-believe cu uh, customer if you'd like. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to be releasing a few more videos on, on automation and uh, productivity apps, um, and I hope you like this one. Thanks.